The Eve Weather V2 is a thread-enabled outdoor weather station for your home kit at home, but does it live up to the hype surrounding thread and is it worth the price? After about six months of testing, I can confidently say that you bet your ass it does. Let's talk about why. Greetings Internet, I'm Dustin with my HomeKit Home and here we look at the smart home with an Apple HomeKit and accessibility focus. So the second generation Eve Weather was one of the first widely available products to hit the market with support for Thread. If you don't already know, Thread is a low power self-filling wireless mesh protocol poised to take the smart home world by storm and Eve Systems is leading the assault, at least in HomeKit anyway. Now, Eve did provide me with a sample unit of the Eve Weather and some of their other thread-enabled products so I could test out the network and share it with you. But as always, if I don't like something, I'm definitely going to let you know. And I did find some chinks in the Eve Weather's armor. So with that being said, let's jump into the box and look at some of the hardware features of the Eve Weather. All right, let's break this thing down. The Eve Weather is an outdoor temperature, humidity, and barometric pressure sensor with a three inch e-ink screen that displays all of that data along with a hyper local 12 hour weather forecast. Through the app, you can review the historical data from hourly all the way up to yearly as well. The Eve Weather V2 does connect over thread, but I suppose you could use Bluetooth if you're a caveman. It does have an IPX3 rating, so you should be good as long as it doesn't take any dives in the pool. It does use a CR2450 battery, which should be good for about a year of normal use. And its stated operating temperature range is from negative 10 to positive 55 degrees Celsius. So the setup process for the Eve Weather is just like any other HomeKit device. We'll jump into a HomeKit app. Here I'm using Apple's Home app. So we'll tap the plus button. We'll tap add accessory. We'll scan the QR code from the packaging or from the device itself. We'll put it in a room, give it a name, and Bob's your uncle. Now, if you don't have a thread border router like the HomePod Mini, the Apple TV 4K second generation, or one of these soon to be updated NanoLeaf Elements products, you can still use the Eve Weather in HomeKit over Bluetooth, but seriously, why would you? Now, to get the Eve Weather set up in your thread network, all you have to do is, well, nothing. If you have one of the aforementioned thread border routers, the Eve Weather should be automatically recognized as a thread device and integrated into the network. But you may want to make sure that all of the firmwares are up to date for all of your thread devices. The Eve Weather was my first thread device, and I was really excited to check it out given all of the buzz surrounding this new smart home protocol. Now, there are a ton of videos out there that do a really good job of explaining what Thread is and how it works, and I'll leave some links to some of those videos in the description box. But I can tell you that the Eve Weather acts as a sleepy endpoint device in Thread, meaning that it doesn't do anything to pass along communications from the border router to other routers and other devices. I've tested the Eve Weather and Thread networks on two different properties, and I have to say that the results in terms of speed and reliability have been pretty incredible, especially considering that both houses were constructed of concrete and steel. Not once did I get the dreaded no response message in HomeKit, except for once when I needed to change the battery, but that was really my own fault for not having paid attention to all of the low battery notifications. One of the coolest but often overlooked features of the Eve Weather is the fact that it analyzes barometric pressure to give you a hyper-local 12-hour weather trend. It then displays this trend in icon form either on the device's display or in the app. This is perfect for anyone who happens to live in an area of the world where the weather can be pretty unpredictable. I also really like the e-ink display. Well, not the display itself so much since I can't really see it even though the text is pretty large, but the fact that it can fit the temperature humidity and the 12 hour current weather trend on the same screen. This is a huge improvement over the first gen Eve weather which had no display at all and this one definitely wins some wife and mother-in-law. 
Going back to Thread, the Eve Weather is the perfect application for this smart home protocol because it's intended to be used outdoors and you might not have a home hub within Bluetooth range of where you want to put the Eve Weather and even a fairly minimal Thread network should get you the coverage you need to ensure solid communication. As I mentioned at the top of the video, the second generation Eve Weather is not the perfect device. It did make some pretty great improvements in terms of power consumption with the first generation using two AA batteries and eating through them pretty quickly. This version uses a single CR2450 coin cell battery, which is pretty efficient, especially over thread, but I would have liked to have seen a rechargeable battery like in the Eve room. One of the points that I mentioned in my oh so cringy review of the first generation Eve weather that hasn't changed in the second generation is the fact that the barometric pressure sensor is not exposed to HomeKit. Now this is definitely a limitation of HomeKit itself, but you can get around this fact by setting up some different automations in the E for HomeKit app based on that barometric pressure and even the 12 hour current weather trend as well. The Eve Weather is a sleepy endpoint device in your thread network, meaning that it doesn't really do anything to help strengthen or fortify your thread network, which is something that you might want in an outdoor device to sort of get that thread network a little bit further. So I would have liked to have seen thread router support in the Eve Weather. The Eve Weather does prominently feature an e-ink display, which is pretty snazzy if you can see it. Otherwise, you'll have to rely on Siri or the app. Speaking of the app, Eve has done a pretty bang up job making sure that the vast majority of their app is pretty accessible with voiceover. All of the buttons and images that are used in the app that I came across by and large were accessible using voiceover. One small caveat to this, specific to the Eve weather, is the graphs that are used to display the sensor data over time. While the graphs themselves are not accessible using voiceover, the information in those graphs is, so there's really no issue there. Now, if you're interested in knowing just how blind friendly the Eve weather is, you can check out our full review over at myhomekithome.com. So even if the weather in your area is pretty predictable, having hyper-local climate data is pretty useful because a lot of times the weather that's displayed on your iOS widget comes from some building downtown or even a lot of times from the airport and it can vary pretty dramatically. And while there aren't a ton of HomeKit compatible weather stations to compare it to, the Eve weather is a winner in my book with the 12 hour weather trend and the e-ink display. And Thread, well, that's just the icing on the cake that brings everything together. So what did I miss? What questions do you have about the Eve weather? Let me know in the comment section down below. Also below the video in the description box, you'll find a ton of links and resources about the Eve weather, Thread, and HomeKit in general, so definitely check that out. If you found today's video useful, please give us a big thumbs up. It really does help out the channel. And if you're interested in more HomeKit related content, go ahead and subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss out on any of our new content as soon as it's released. Now, if you're interested in learning more about Thread, you can check out this video here, or if you want to see how Thread stacks up against Zigbee, you can check out this video here. Well, that's all that I have for you today. Thank you for watching till the end, and I'll see you in the next one.